Thank you. Luis, go ahead. Okay, this is stolen. You may have noticed that this is uh, the way we nowadays start all our uh, innovation presentations. I have one thing to say. When I saw this uh, sketch for the first time, I basically told my two colleagues, you are crazy, this is going to fall to the side because the turbine is not in the right place. That was my first reaction and now I have to start presentations with this picture. It's my punishment now. We always start uh, with this because it really shows how much, how strongly EDP is committed towards innovation. Doing a project like this requires lots of people involved and lots of money, lots of support to principal power, and actually lots of soft skills engaged in, in getting permittings and funding and all of that. So it shows how committed we are to innovation. Uh, what's EDP today? Uh, EDP is, uh, well, we started out as, you know, the typical national uh, state-owned utility in Portugal, and then eventually we uh, started privatization in the 90s. Today we are a fully uh, private company uh, on stock exchange, but fully uh, privately held company. Uh, and also we've started in the 90s an internationalization process that led us to Brazil and to Spain, by disorder actually. It's not that we don't like Spain, we love Spain, but we actually went first to Brazil uh, with conventional type of business. So with businesses from uh, power production in you know, uh, conventional thermal power plants or hydro plants to selling power to customers with everything in the middle including distribution, of course. Uh, and what, what happened in uh, the last 10 years is that we've started to develop a very substantial renewable power business that today is key uh, uh, in, in EDP in many ways, as we are going to see. So today, EDP is one of the top five worldwide wind power producers. So there's basically four companies that have uh, comparable, uh, sizable portfolios as EDP. And we are present in a number of markets like, uh, of course, Portugal, Spain and Brazil, but also uh, North America, uh, France, Italy, you know, Eastern Europe, UK. Why do we look at innovation? Why is innovation so important? <laughs> I think there was a lecture yesterday, I, I couldn't be here yesterday, but there was a lecture about what's happening to the earnings of the utilities in Europe. And basically, if you are a utility in Europe, you are in a very complex situation if you don't look at innovation. What you see here is uh, EDP's group consolidated EBTA in 2008, 3.2 billion euros. And the same activities that were providing 3.2 billion euros to us in uh, 2008, last year provided 2.7. And actually, this, this was a little bit uh, due to some extraordinary, extraordinary positive events because it was going to be even lower than that. So the nature of the utility businesses today is this one, decreasing earnings, uh, very strongly decreasing earnings. If we look at other comparables in Europe, it's actually much worse than, than this type of uh, a profile. Fortunately for us, we've started to invest significantly into wind power, and so we created a second business that provides us today a third of what we generate on, on our operations. And so because of that, and this is really the only reason, because we took a forefront attitude towards a new way of producing power, towards a change in the energy sector, we were able to be one of the few utilities in Europe that's actually growing in value. And this is very important because this is not the only change that's taking place in the utility sector. Actually, onshore wind power today is all story. It's finished. It's, it's a business that will keep on growing more or less slightly above the average of the sector. What we see now when we look at the uh, value chain of the, of the utility sector, well, basically we start to see some novelties, like the things that we have here on our, on our left side, which is the sector doesn't seem to stop anymore at the door of the customers. The sector nowadays goes inside the houses of the customers with things like distributed solar, electric cars, and uh, static storage at, uh, at, at customers' houses. That's a very important thing because this left side area didn't exist 10 years ago, and now it does. And the other thing is that technology is eating us all over the value chain. We are getting uh, uh, on a phenomenon of technology convergence that basically is changing and reshaping the way that the sector uh, is built. It's a totally new, different sector, and we believe that it's going to continue to, to be like that at increasing speed. So we need to look at this. Because I only have seven minutes, I'm going to accelerate now a little bit. Yeah, yeah, 
minute. One minute? Okay. Whoa. <laughs> I'm going to accelerate a little bit with two messages for corporates. The first one is we have to have a strategic view into something like this. This basically looks like a mess, and so you need to define your priorities, and we have defined our own priorities, and we constantly try to advertise them and try to attract companies into these priorities. And the second thing is that it's the castle. Your castle is great. It's a great slide. Uh, the castle basically shows the typical attitude of a utility uh, towards, uh, towards innovation. I mean, there's lots of rules, lots of processes, and, uh, you know, you have to find a way, as an open innovation manager, you have to find a way to facilitate the uh, uh, adoption of innovation, working with startups. You have to find your own way, you have to find your way through the organization. So I'm not going to tell you much about that, I'm just leaving with this message, and with that I'm jumping four slides, I know. You have to find a way to have your organization engaged at top level and at uh, transversally throughout your organization. This is very important. Every company is different, but you have to find your own way to make projects happen with startups. Uh, another one that I'm going to go really fast, building an open innovation unit, it doesn't come in one day, it doesn't come in one year, not even in two years. We've, doing, we've been doing this since 2007. It's a long process. We keep on trying to improve it. Uh, we, don't, we don't have it uh, at the right place yet. We believe we are going to improve next year and the following years. Now, this is what uh, I would really love to show you. This is what we try to be to open innovation, to startups. We try to be a one-stop shop for innovation. We try to be able to support innovation regardless of the maturity at which it comes to us. When Principal Power came to us, it was an idea. It was a concept. No test tanking yet. So we actually went through all of that process with them and we made it uh, together with them and most of the work for sure is from Principal Power, but we helped them to make uh, uh, the, the wind float concept a success. So we can support ideas. We actually stimulate uh, the emergence of ideas in the energy field through several innovation competitions. The most uh, well known is uh, uh, something that we simply call the Open Innovation Award. Uh, the final was, uh, was this month, uh, on the 2nd of November, in Lisbon. And uh, basically it's something that we advertise fundamentally in Portugal, Spain and Brazil, but that actually gets uh, applicants from all over the world. We have other innovation competitions as well. Uh, then we can facilitate uh, execution of prototypes. We have our own EDP uh, uh, Fab Lab which uh, allows startups to go there and simply produce their, uh, their prototypes of the products that they are trying to develop. This goes at zero cost. The, start the startup doesn't have to pay anything uh, to access the, the Fab Lab. It just gets, needs to get into the list and there's, well, there's a little bit of a list uh, on that. I have, to, I have to ask you to wrap up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have our own incubation minutes. activities. Uh, basically, we have an incubator that we call EDP Starter. It's active in Portugal, Spain and Brazil. We are trying to expand it, but for now, only in these two geographies. If you are in our incubator, you automatically are participating in something that we call our seed race. This means that the company that performs the best, that improves most over a year, is eligible for a 100k investment from our corporate VC. We can also do pilot projects, small ones and big ones, like the principal power one. We have uh, developed several schemes that help us to fund these pilot projects. So uh, we try to minimize the burden onto the startup of getting the funding to, to act to develop the pilot projects. And finally, we have a corporate VC as well, in which we have several investments. I'm just going to show you this. This is uh, uh, basically, if I'm not mistaken, all of our startups. Several of them are here. Principal Power is here, as you know. But Beyond is here as well. Ion Seed is here as well. Uh, I'm not sure if... Uh, ProDrone is here as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. These three. I need to show you just one thing more. Well, we, we are significant supporters of the ecosystem, and then I need to make an announcement. Can I make an announcement? Okay. What is the announcement? Oh, this, this is not the announcement, sorry. This is just okay. an award we've been given. Let's go on to the announcement. <laughs> this then. is the announcement. Okay. The announcement is the following. So EDP is teaming up with seven other utilities. Uh, RWE, nowadays called Energy, uh, ESB from Ireland, uh, Singapore Power, TEPCO from Japan, 
uh, Dewa from Dubai and two Australian utilities, one is Ausnet and the other is Origin. And what we are doing together is that we are launching our own global utility accelerator program that's going to start actually in 2017. The site is already operational. You can go there and you can enlist to receive more information. This program is going to be very special. It's going to last around uh, five months. It's going to have one model in San Francisco. It's going to have another model in Lisbon and the third model in Singapore. And basically, it's going to be all around, you know, it's an acceleration program. There's going to be prize money at the end, just prize money, zero equity. We, ha we don't have the final value closed, but it's going to be a few hundreds thousands of dollars. Can tell you if it's two or three, not yet clear. Uh, it's going to be that prize money for zero equity, so no strings attached. And you are going to have actually two types of competitions. Okay, I think Startups I, no, no, just, I, just, just, just one, one thing more. Just one but thing uh, more. They, they can check on, on the website. Thank you very no, much. Just one thing uh, we, have, we have one minute left before. One minute? Left. One minute? No, 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 no. For the whole session. And I, people have to still have to ask questions. So just to, say, just to say one thing it's startups competing for the utilities, but it's also utilities competing for the startups. And this is very important because this accelerates traction. Okay. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks. I'm